and welcome back to my channel. This is Dom and today I'm going to be taking a look at this. So yes, today I'm going to take a look at this uh, kit from Warlords. This is for the Carrero Amato Amato or Semavinte. Um, so basically it's the same kit that allows you to build um, two different options. So you can buy, you can build the uh, M13 uh, stroke 40 or actually by three models there you go so m1340 uh, medium tank or the m1441 medium tank or alternatively you can make the semavinte um, 7518 um, anti-tank or self-propelled gun um, which i think is great to have all those options in it i've actually got two and I'm probably going to make one of each. I'll probably make uh, one of the M1441s and one of the Semavintes. Um, so let's have a quick look at what's in the box first. Um, usual high standard, I have to say. I, I think uh, Warlord kits, I like them very much. I think they're, um, they're, they're really well done. They're nice box sets. They give you a little bit of information. So it tells you about this tank. Was the Italian main battle tank through World War Two? Uh, was introduced in 1941. Sorry, 1940. Um, although designed as a medium tank, it was more in common with light tanks of other nations. Armor of up to 42 millimeters thick, armed with a 47 millimeter anti-tank gun, and backed up by four 8 millimeter machine guns. So that's going to make it a bit powerful for bolt action. Carried a four-man crew. Uh, and then talks about the uh, Semavente. It says uh, the hull was converted to a self propelled gun after the success of the German Stug assault guns. Um, this kit includes a plastic vehicle which can be made either as an M1340 or an M1441 medium tank or the Semavente. Uh, it comes with assembly and painting guide, bolt action stats cards full color uh, water decals and vehicle damage markers there you go so let's have a look inside the box there we go so a bit of bump about uh, warlords there there's your there's the guide nice booklet again Good quality goes into a bit more detail about the tank itself. There's the assembly. What's well, the sprue details anyway? Two sprues by the look of it. Not so keen on the tracks that um, have to be made up. Um, so it looks like, as it said, the hull is the same for both models. You build it out and then it becomes specialist depending on which way you go with your vehicle. Not too complicated. There's the uh, well, hopefully not too complicated. There's the damage markers. Um, there is the painting guide for doing the uh, Semavente for Albania March forty one. So single color. You've got again different options for the different turrets, and then some more painting guides. Uh, this is for the Semavente three three tone camouflage, Italy, September forty three. That's probably what I will try and do. Although I'll have zero chance of making that uh, look that good. And then there's another option at the back here. So there you go. Uh, oh, and another another diagram at the back. So and it looks like you can do a lot of detail inside. I can tell you that much. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> not unless it's very very easy. Anyway. First up, I'm going to make the model and let you know what I think about it. Okay, so this is where I've got to um, done the lower chassis, um, which, as I said before, I don't really like these uh, tracks that you have to build up, uh, and they were a little bit fiddly to get on, but they're, they're there now, and not too bad. Bit of a clunk there, which I may have to cover up with a bit of mud. Um, yeah, they just never quite fit how you... Yeah, oh well. Uh, it is what it is. I'm not a model maker, as you know, if you watch this channel. Um, and then, oh, that's just now collapsed as well. Great. 
these little fiddly bits you think oh does it really add anything to the model is it really necessary is it is it is it talking about whether it's really necessary um i've uh, the next stage is to do the inner bits and i just don't see that they're really needed um yeah so if you look on the instructions here it talks about filling in the inner workings but given the fact you're going to cover it over i don't know how much you're actually going to see of it so i'm kind of thinking about not bothering because I'm going to do the Semovin C, which doesn't have, let me just double check, there's nothing, no workings that need to go into that. Yeah, so you just cover it all over. So it's only if you're, so there's no point doing that, absolutely no point doing that at all. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to cover the, the top. Um, yeah, it's 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 okay. I mean, all these models are fairly straightforward, uh, even for a, um, a Luddite like me. Um, but um, we'll come back with the next stage. Okay, so slight correction. It does appear that you do at least need to put in uh, this piece of the inner workings, because that's where the gun sits. So um, the good news is the track well, the sort of irregularities of the tracks are covered by these mud guards. The bad news is it's really fiddly to get it pushed down far enough that then these accessories on each side fit into the, the holes that they're supposed to there. In the end, I ended up cutting um, the, the sort of uh, nipple, if you like, uh, don't snigger at the back there, um, to to be able to stick that as tightly there as I possibly can, which is frustrating. Um, and then the gun barrel appears. Well, it says it should just sit free in there, unglued. But um, to me, that's just asking for it just to fall inside. If it comes off the uh, tiny little nipple and connection there, that just seems stupid to me, so I'm going to glue it. Um, so it means the gun has no mobility, but hey, it's a self-propelled uh, anti-tank gun, so who cares? Um, right, I think the next bit should be the finale. Um, I have to say, um, it's not been the easiest kit in the world to do, um, but um, not the hardest either. I just, you know, why do they make these uh, kits as hard to make? As a real tank would have been. Uh, I just don't get it. Anyway, back in a bit. Okay, so I'm almost on the verge of rage quitting here with this bloody model. It's a nightmare. Um, this thing does not sit properly in there. I've had to rip... Um, I mean, just look, none of it fits together. I've had to take the front panel off because it was too steep. Um, so it, there was a big gap left there. I'm getting gaps everywhere. This is just horrible. I hate this model. This is just horrible. And the, the gun has now fallen off its uh, pedestal in there, which is what I always feared was going to happen. It is just, yeah, this is horrible. This is a nightmare. Why do they make these bloody kits so hard to make? Uh, I'm not a modeler. I'm a, I want to play with toy soldiers. Back in a bit if I haven't chucked it in the bin. God damn it, I am not a modeler. I mean, this was just a biatch to put together, I'm gonna to be honest. Um, look at that, look at that gap across the front there. Um, so what went wrong? Well, as you saw, the, just fitting. In the end, I had to pull this panel off um, to allow this to fit snugly in there. Then I had to, get the uh, elevation of this just right because it was too low because it fitted in the sprockets that were there but it was too low and the gap was even bigger um, so it's bad enough now um, I had to glue the barrel in the end in place because otherwise it just wouldn't fit in there there's still a big gap around here another one around here so yeah uh, in the process, I managed to pull off one of the tow rope things here. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it, it looks like 
there's a bit of leeway in this panel here but that's so well stuck I can't actually lever it off so the result is I've got a big gap running down there so um, thank god for uh, liquid green stuff because it's going to be used along the front there uh, some I don't mind the odd little gap because generally in the po painting progress uh, process like the one at the back there you can just I don't know whether it's my fat finger in the way you can probably see the little gap there and there's another little gap there um, those will probably disappear in the painting process but um, as I suspected you don't need to do the inside because look you close it up there's how do you, you know, I mean, what was the point of putting all that in place and the bit that the gun was supposed to fit on it wasn't obvious how it would actually fit on you know it needed that post that was on this side but otherwise it didn't really need any of the other gubbins in there at all um, and so that was a complete waste of time I guess if you'd been chosen to do the, the hatches open because it's quite a large area you'd want to have something to see on the inside but I was never going to do that because it means painting up a crew member doesn't it and I'm not going to do that anyway it's finally done uh, I need to do some green stuff um, and then we'll get painting okay so quick up update on the painting um, you can see I did fill that line not as well as I liked um, I'm gonna have to try and conceal it with some uh, painting um, the liquid glue liquid uh, green stuff that I thought I had had dried out so I had to use regular stuff and it's just not really filled it quite how I'd like anyway I'm sure I can conceal it what have I done um, I've just used uh, this army painter uh, this is oops desert yellow sprayed it all over obviously mounted it on a base because only a heathen wouldn't do that um, basically sprayed it with that desert uh, paint to give it a nice undercoat and then all I've done is use Agrax Earthshade as a wash over the top and I have picked out the tracks uh, just using um, which it, the black contrast paint. I forget which one it is. Black Legion is it or whatever it is. Um, so that's where we are. So now I'm going to try and dapple on the uh, the camo. Um, so I'm going to try and follow this kind of pattern, which is uh, chocolate brown and camo olive green, apparently. So um, wish me luck. I'll be back. And there we are with the final model. Um, it came out all right, considering all the fights I had with it. Um, quite pleased with the yeah, up shot. So I, I did the uh, the camo that I planned to do, that sort of dappled brown and green on the, um, I guess the sort of tan white, uh, tanned um, sand colored base. Um, I did it just using a an old brush, dabbed it on in sort of random-ish places. Um, because I always, I mean, a lot of people talk about all the different um, camo varieties and what have you. Um, and reality is most of the guys applied these with sort of an old mop or a broom with paint. So I think that sort of is simulated quite well with just an old paintbrush. So that's what I did. Um, I then very, very lightly dry brushed it with um, deck tan just to sort of pick up the, uh, the highlights around the place. And then... Um, used Vallejo mud uh, on the base and then sort of used the old paintbrush again to sort of push it up around amongst the uh, the wheels and the and the back of the tank and what have you just to give that sort of fact it's churning up the ground as it heads across the field I think it's come out all right you can just about see the little not quite perfect join where the green stuff didn't didn't quite work how it should do uh, but I think three foot rule this will be absolutely fine on the table uh, as part of my mm, soon to be launched new Italian project so there you go um, uh, there's a few few pictures of the tank going around the uh, in close up in a minute on the turntable so uh, look out for that in a second but thanks for watching this if you if you found it useful or helpful please like share and if you haven't already done so subscribe to the channel um, I don't do unboxes and paintings very often um, but um, <laughs> you can see sometimes they can be quite amusing because I am not a modeler 
I am a free man. No, I'm not a modeler. Um, I'm a gamer. And so that's where I'll always approach uh, building these sort of things. So anyway, I hope you're doing well. Hope you're staying safe. And I'll see you again soon. This is Dom signing out.